Hey people, welcome back to my game room. I'm David McCord and I want to bring you another in our series of uh, how-to videos. Hey, this time we're talking about a game here that a lot of people are familiar with called Fox and Geese. Fox and Geese is a popular game from uh, the European theater. It goes way back. I'm sure you're familiar with this little board and the shape of it. You probably played it uh, in a lot of different variations over the years. It has a long history as one of those predator and prey games. Um, we've done quite a series of predator and prey games where one player, in this case, plays a fox who's trying to eat all the geese, and uh, the other player plays a herd of geese, or flock, a flock of geese, who are trying to overwhelm the fox. Now, this particular game goes back at least to the Middle Ages. It was described in an Icelandic saga uh, called the Gretis Saga, and uh, it was called Halatafel at that time. That was a Norse version of the game, but it since has been played in many variations uh, around Europe. In the uh, household accounts of King Edward IV, uh, there is a record that he had ordered a copy of the game made out of silver. And it also is said that uh, Queen Victoria of England really enjoyed the game herself. So uh, anyway, let's uh, learn how to play fox and geese. Watch this. Fox and geese is played on a cross-shaped board of 33 points joined by orthogonal and diagonal lines in a specific pattern. One player controls a flock of 13 geese, which start the game on three rows of the board. The other player takes the part of the fox, which may start on any empty point they want. The geese get the first turn moving one goose along any line to an adjacent empty point. The fox then takes a turn, but has a choice depending on position. The fox can move one space, just like the geese, or may capture a goose by jumping over it onto an empty point beyond, following the lines on the board. The goose peg is removed from the board. Chain jumps are allowed, so if the fox can capture a second goose, it can do so immediately. Any number of geese can be captured in a single turn by a chain of jumps. The geese can't jump the fox, but they win the game by trapping the fox so that he is unable to move at all on the next turn. The fox wins by capturing enough geese to prevent them winning. Now you quite often see fox and geese in this form. You see this in a lot of craft fairs and so on, and you can pick it up with it. It's played with marbles on here and then you can put the capture marbles around the edge. It's a pretty popular way to go about it, but it's a little bulky to be carrying around. That's why I like our little peg version here because it's a lot more portable. Um, but it plays the same way anyways. Now the game seems to favor the geese, uh, but uh, you know they can win every time if you don't make a mistake. It's kind of hard to do when you're keeping track of an a entire flock of geese uh, around the table. So Now with a different number of pegs, this board can be used to play what's known as French Solitaire. Um, I'm sure everybody has played that uh, game where you just simply jump the pegs to try to come up with a single peg left over if you can or get as close to that as possible. So that's a nice little puzzle challenge. Um, back in 1960-61 uh, um, there was a, a company called Super Toys Limited up in Canada that created a game, a version of that game called High Q. Um, and it had one peg that was an off color. Um, I think most of them were red. And their challenge was to play the simple uh, jumping game uh, and keep that red peg as your very last peg. And that really meant that you were a uh, pretty astounding intellect, I guess, good puzzle solver. Um, later that game was published by a, game, a company called Koner uh, and several other companies have uh, produced the IQ game as well. Our version of Fox and Geese also includes the rules to a game called Assalto, and uh, that was a very popular military-themed game um, from the late Victorian period. And uh, it's available in a lot of different forms, but it's played on the same board. R.C. Bell is one of the most uh, renowned historians as far as gamers are concerned. And uh, in the late 60s, around 1970 thereabouts, he came out with a series of books 
on uh, the history of games from around the world. And of course, he talks about fox and geese in that book. Um, the difference is in one of his diagrams, he doesn't show the diagonals. And that's the only place I've seen that. So I'm not sure uh, whether that was a variation uh, from a certain region. He doesn't go into a lot of detail there. Um, so I guess the game can be played without playing the diagonals, but most often you see the diagonals in there. And so that's Fox and Geese, part of our PEG pastime series from New Venture and Red Hen. Uh, definitely encourage you to check out the entire series there at uh, redhentoys.com. Um, encourage you to subscribe to the video channel here and tell all your friends about it. And uh, press a little bell there and we'll let you know when our next how-to video is available. We uh, hope here in the future to uh, have a kind of a discussion format and, and talk a little bit more about games, uh, more historical games, more hobby games, uh, perhaps even games that don't exist yet. Uh, by all means, if you have any questions or requests uh, about games, historical or otherwise, please uh, let us know and we'll see if we can't, uh, can't address those in future episodes. So meanwhile, it's like I always tell you, be sure to play every day.